Welcome everybody. We're into our, what's it, fifth session of today. And uh, our next speaker is Grant Evans. He's going to talk to us about algorithmic for, forex trading. Um, thank goodness it was written down. I wouldn't be able to spell <laughs> that. Um, the, and whatever that is, but basically he's going to tell us about what he did and the pitfalls and all the good stuff that can happen. So Grant, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Gavin. Um, yeah, I'm Grant Evans. Um, I've made my, my, my talking to a video in the hope of getting it to uh, um, YouTube, but apparently YouTube says uh, it's too long. So um, it's only about half an hour. But anyway, um, so I will, I'll run this as a video. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go through a little bit about Forex and um, show you some, if you want to get into, involved in Forex for yourself, um, then this is probably what you want to hear. Um, also, it's not necessarily a pitching. I'm not pitching a business here. It's, I'm just passionate about giving away information and teaching people. So this is a freebie. Um, have fun. So I'm going to try and put on my video here. And it, I'm going to be on the chat. What's nice about having the video running on the side is I'm on the chat session. So if anyone's got a question at any point, throw it into the chat. I can pick it up on the chat. I can actually talk back to you on there. Um, okay, so let me try and share my screen, optimize those things. And... Uh, I just want to share a portion of the screen. Um, let me see if this works. Can you all see that? I'm assuming people can see it. I can't see you, by the way. I can just see this. I'm going to run it and then tell me inside the chat session if you can see it. I'd like to start my talk with a story about how I arrived at this point in my trading career to give you both a feel for my expertise, where they lie and where they don't lie. So join me, uh, I'd like to take you through trading, through Forex and also automation. But before we go there, I'm gonna have to put up a disclaimer like we do in the financial industry to say to you that what I'm gonna present to you now is in no way a, uh, a me giving you advice uh, of what to buy, uh, of what to invest in. It's information, it's free, it's yours, if you can use it, Go for it. I will try and teach you how to teach yourself as well. My introduction to trading started uh, with a course, a progressive systems course, uh, 20 odd years ago, uh, which was given to me by a friend who uh, had bought the course and was not going to use it. It was a great course. I, thought, I still think it's a good course. It uh, taught you about the fundamentals, uh, it taught fundamental analysis. It talked, talked to you about the, um, um, the technical analysis. Uh, it also gave me opportunity to actually trade and so I bought shares in a gold mine which I knew nothing about and paid my first school fees but it was a good learning curve you are going to pay school fees up front um, and you need to know that uh, so I'm in no ways unhappy that I've learned that years later with an MBA from Stellenbosch under my belt I was teaching at Stellenbosch University finance uh, corporate finance uh, statistics uh, business analytics and one of the students that I was teaching uh, actually approached me and asked me would I like to get back into trading he had some money had been trading for a while and he'd like to put his skills against mine so we did that using his money which was good um, it, it got me back into trading it uh, the returns were okay they were great but they were okay but at least it ignited my my desire to actually get back into trading and, and learn this and what I found at that time was that the over the last 20 years that I'd been missing in trading, um, the the trading became more uh, available to the man in the street. There was software available, freely downloadable software download, uh, available. There was data available uh, and, and a whole horde of, of uh, training platforms and websites and things. Some of these I'll give you some insight into a little later. I then negotiated myself a desk at a broker down the road just to be put myself in the environment of trading people, of investing people, just to see if by osmosis I could pick up some, uh, some information and, uh, and a bit more experience, uh, which worked. Um, while I was there, I had an account with them, I was trading with them, I got into some software that they were using and I was trading manually. Uh, with my programming background and my IT background, I realized that I can actually create my own indicators, which are just little things that flag me to let me know that now's a good time to buy, now's a good time to sell. Obviously with some logic in there that I had to put in myself, but I was able to do the calculations automatically. 
I'd been doing that uh, very manually up till then. I then realized that, hang on a second, I can go one step further um, with some software, and I'll show you the software a little later. Um, I can actually make the, the software package do the trade for me um, and completely automate, which means I'm, I can be available 24-5. The market's only open five days a week. But while I'm sleeping at night, I can still be trading based on the rules that I've come up with. At that time, we were still trading in CFDs. Uh, CFDs is contract per difference, which means I'm actually buying shares on the stock market, but in little portions. I'm not going to get into the technicalities of what they are exactly, but I become a trader rather than an investor. An investor would be someone who buys something for the long term, uh, looking to make money normally off the, uh, the dividends that get paid out, which is just a, a share of the profits for the company. Uh, whereas I was becoming a trader, which is I buy it at a low price and I sell it at a high price. I don't really care about uh, dividend payouts, they a bonus if they happen. But most of the time, I'm not holding the share long enough to actually get the dividend payout. So I'm looking to buy at 10 Rand, sell at 11 Rand, get in, get out kind of thing. CFDs, unfortunately, uh, are quite costly because every time I buy and I sell, I have to pay a commission off the top and uh, there's a minimum amount that you must buy. So you need a fair amount of money to make, to make money there. And I might well return to that at some point. But after, after a while, I started to listen to those people who had given me advice and said, why don't you look at Forex? Forex, I knew nothing about. In fact, I could even go as far as to say that when I heard the word Forex, I thought it might be some sort of a Ponzi scheme something a bit weird something on the edges something like bitcoin was a couple of years ago where no one understood what it was um and and so i moved into forex not knowing nothing about it but being a, a quick learner and really being passionate about it I, I just learned it really quickly um and i started trading what's nice about forex is the costs are, are, are really low uh, it's incredibly liquid markets so I'm, I'm trading in the major currencies like the uh, the yen and the usd and the pound and the euro. So if I want to sell my, my whatever I'm holding tomorrow, there's somebody available who wants to buy it from me, which is not always the same, always like that on, on the stock market, depending on, of course, which shares you, you're buying or selling. I now have an algorithm, which I call Nomad. Nomad because the prices go up and down in the markets. So I thought we'd just call it Nomad. And it's, uh, it trades automatically on the Forex market at various brokers. And I'll tell you a bit later about the brokers themselves. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit about the software as well. But if you're using it for a couple of funds, I've got a fund in Joburg, a fund in Cape Town, a fund in Chicago that you're running it on. And then a, one or two single accounts for friends and family uh, that I'm trying to move into funds. It makes my life easier from an admin perspective if I can run them all inside funds. Um, there is one, one of these funds is actually one of the members here at, at this uh, trade fair. You can go to his kiosk. It's uh, called Wealth Builders. Um, it's free to ask uh, some advice or just to have a chat and find out a bit more what it's about. It's free to join. So what is Forex? Forex is foreign exchange. Other currencies, uh, not other currencies, all currencies make up uh, foreign exchange. And basically what you're doing is you're changing one currency for another. So you might uh, change rands into dollars and then tr uh, Trump says something which makes the dollar go up and then you sell the dollars back or change them back into rands and you make a profit on the exchange rate that has moved. You'll often see on the TV exchange rates going up and down for various reasons. And basically what we're doing is we're buying the exchange rate. Uh, we, buy it, we buy it when we think it's going to go up and we sell it when we think it's going to go down. And that's and in interestingly enough, we can sell things that we don't even have uh, but if you think about it, if I buy the dollar rand, then I'm buying dollars by using rands. And if I sell the dollar rand, then I'm buying rands by using dollars. That's basically how that works. But we're basically exchanging one currency for another. In, in, in actual fact, we're buying what is called currency futures. I'm not going to get into the technicalities of it, but at, at the base, we are really just buying the, the, uh, the exchange rate uh, in the hope that it moves in the direction that we want it to move. Uh, the products that we use are, are geared. So when I trade, I, I use geared products or leveraged products. So basically, I use 30 to 1. Uh, you can use up as to as much as 400 to 1, but I found that extremely risky. So basically, it's like uh, when you buy a house, you put down a deposit. You can't afford an entire house. You haven't got the cash for it, so you put down a deposit, but you get the whole house. 
uh, what the same as what I do in Forex. I put down one rand, but I actually get 30 rands worth of, of, of product, and the product being the exchange rate in this case. So there's a gearing, and the gearing helps us to, for a small amount of money, make a large return, larger return than we could if we, were, if we weren't gearing. Um, but on the other side, that it also makes a larger loss if you get it wrong, to the same proportion. So we've got to be careful when it, when it comes to gearing. It's, it's great when it works, it's a nightmare when it doesn't. So you've got to be careful about that and just know about that. Um, we still go through a broker, so we are not brokers ourselves. There isn't a place where you can go to like pick and pay and go buy uh, currency futures. So we find brokers, and there are a couple in the country, where we go, we, we approach them, we open an account, it's fairly simple. There's obviously FICA and everything else that you have to do. Um, and they'll vet you, but eventually you can get yourself an account and you can start trading. Um, I've got accounts but here, I've got in the States, I've got in, in Europe as well. Uh, just different brokers and there's different reasons for the different brokers and we'll get into the brokers a little bit later. So I call this section pitfalls. Um, it's just things that I want you to be aware of before you get into any kind of trading. You really do need to think about whether you can afford to trade. Uh, do not trade with money you cannot afford to lose. Let's put it that out, out there straight away. In fact, when I talk to people, the one thing I guarantee them is that there is a possibility you could lo lose the money you're investing. And that's across the board. That's, that's anywhere. I mean, you could have put money into VBS and lost it. So really, it, it, anything can happen. Um, you could have it in the top, uh, top 20 shares and Steinhoff goes down and you lose a, a lot of money. Uh, Sassel went down the other day, although it's popped up nicely again. So no matter where you are, and if you actually read the fine print of most of the contracts, wherever you go uh, in terms of investing your money, you will find that it actually does say, look, there's a disclaimer, you could lose all your money. So I'd like to start there right up front so you know you could lose all your money. Do not invest money that you can't afford to lose. Okay, and over time you'll get a better feel for how risky the market is and it depends on this, your style and the, uh, the rules that you come up with. The other thing I want to talk about is um, don't just watch out for your emotions and that's the reason, one of the reasons why uh, the algorithm that I use actually works so well. They talk about fear and greed in the market. Uh, fear is the, the price is going down, oh what am I going to do? And so we, we sell and we take the loss and maybe you didn't need to. Or otherwise, and more commonly, is greed. Um, you, you get excited because one of your first two trades, it's actually bad if your first trade is, is really good. Because the first thing it tells you, it, it, it teaches you that you're a really good trader, and you're probably not, not as good as that first trade. And so you pump more money in, and the, the psyche actually works like this, is that you remember the good trades and you kind of quite happily forget the bad trades. And, and you're putting more money in believing that you are as good as that. Um, and it's, it's not necessarily true. So just be careful that, that, that fear and greed, that whole emotion, you want to have rules. I'll talk to you later about it, but you want to have rules about how you're going to trade and you never step outside of those rules. And that's why my algorithm does exactly that. I gave it the rules. I said, this is what we're going to do. It then trades dogmatically day in, day out using the same rules. And what's nice is I can look at it and I say, do the rules work? Well, it appears to work. It's been working for uh, over 30,000 trades now, and um, it, it's, it's working. So I can say these rules do work. The other thing which I also want to talk about here is just be careful. There's a lot of uh, shocks in, 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 in the market. If this happens when we, are, uh, when we are on a downturn. We've took a knock. We took a 28% knock in the stock market in March. It's come back nicely, it's bounced up, and we're not sure what's going to happen in the future. Um, but the market itself took a 28% knock. We, we took about a 5-6% knock, um, but uh, depending on which, which uh, fund we're talking about, some was about 10%, some didn't take a knock at all. But uh, So by comparison, we took less of a knock, but we took a knock. Um, and what happens is that the psyche of people, people are worried about their pension funds. Is the government going to get hold of your pension fund? Uh, are the banks going to survive this? Uh, how are we going to survive without income? And, and, and should we start finding new ways of making money? And so we start bringing up all these ideas. And then people get into the market and they say, listen, well, we can give you these fantastic returns. We can give you 1% a day was one I've heard just lately. Uh, just let's let's just think about that for a second. One percent a day with accumulation uh, is probably around four fifty, maybe five and maybe six hundred percent a year. That's ridiculous returns. Okay, we're not looking at returns in that sort of 
uh, sphere. We, we're looking at, at, at returns. I'm looking at returns between 15 and 20 percent is what I'd like to give my investors after cost. Obviously, we make some money, and there's some admin, and there's some other things, and, and the brokers charge a little bit of money. But that's that's really the sort of uh, range in which I'd like to be. This year, with a knock on, on, on March and maybe a little bit um, running into uh, uh, April and May, um, that might be between 10 and 12, 10 and 15 for the year, um, if, if we take that into account. But in general, I'm looking for 15 to 20 a year. Above that, I've done, but I haven't done consistently, and I haven't met anybody who's done it consistently. Be careful that some of these guys are... Uh, are, are telling you that they can make these returns. They are giving you, uh, that, that I've seen people getting statements saying, you know, you're, you, you've made so much money and no one ever asks the question, how on earth did we end up with, we bought one of these things and now all of a sudden we've got two of these things. No one tells you how you got two, but somehow the, the statement just says you got two. I mean, it's, it's just, it doesn't make sense, okay? And you can't phone the people, you can't ask questions about the, your statements, they're not available. Uh, they can't show you the actual trades that they're doing. Well, I can show you exactly what trade I do, where the money went, everything like that. But just the, the basic thing is just if it if it cracks like a duck, it's a duck. Um, if it if it if your return is going to be above thirty percent a year, I'm 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 already asking the question. So how legit is this? Okay. Yes, people can do it, but consistently. I'm afraid not. So you just, please, just be careful. I'm quite happy if somebody wants to throw something at me and, and ask me what I think about this or this uh, investment. And I don't want to, I don't want to name anybody or, or uh, um, uh, get involved in that, but I don't mind looking at something and saying, look, I, this is my feel. This is what I think about this particular investment. And, and not to prop up our investment. Our investment is yeah, somewhere around 12, 13%. That's, that's where we are. If it's good for you, that's great. If it's not, it's, it's fine. There are many other places you can put your money. So let's talk about how we analyze the market. And the market can, the, the, the types of analysis can be split into two. You've got fundamental analysis and you've got technical analysis. I, I like technical analysis. So but let's just talk about fundamental analysis first. So if it comes to a company, Fundamental analysis would be going out and getting the, the, the statements, the uh, income statements, the balance sheets, the cash flow statements, taking a view of where, which uh, sector they're in and what, having a view on is the sector going to now increase or decrease. I mean, so, so things like uh, any social sort of gathering stuff like, um, like restaurants are taking a knock at the moment, but maybe online deliveries are, are, are on the up because of just the space that we're in at the moment. So. All of that is, is, is part of sort of fundamental analysis and you, you can, I, I teach that uh, as, as a subject, um, adversity, but it, it, it's the, it seeks to find the value of something like a share. So if we can work out what the profit is in the future and how many assets they got, then, but more so about the profit, um, we can then work that down. How many people have shares? Well, we, I'm going to be sharing the, my shares, my share of the profit with all these people over here. Um, and so I think my share should be worth about this much. And I look at the market and I go, oh, it's actually cheaper than that. Great, I'm going to buy it. Okay. And there's great value in that. Um, it's a lot of work. For me, it's a lot of work. And there's, there's a lot of technical, uh, uh, fundamental an anal analysts uh, in, in big banks, uh, at Bloomberg, uh, wherever. You, you can actually find them online that will give you some sort of a, a guide as to what they think. Um, so it's, it's not necessary for me to go and go and redo that. And my, my, my logic on this is if I were to go and analyze a company and find out that I think the share price should be 20 Rand and it's currently trading at, uh, let's say 10 Rand and I buy it because I think, well, it's obviously going to go to 20 Rand. Only obvious if everybody else believes it's going to go to 20 Rand too, because every analyst is doing their own analysis and comes up with a different number. So me being right, if I knew that Steinhoff should have been a lot less, it would have been no point if, if the guys hadn't brought out the, the, the media report that actually dropped the price at the end of the day, we would still be sitting with a very high share price in Steinhoff. So it doesn't matter if I get that price right. So for me, I'm not saying I discount fun, a, a fundamental analysis. I'm just saying enough people do it. If I need it, I'll go find it from them. And if the, that price is already probably in the market. So I'm looking for the mass um, idea of what the price should be. Now, technical analysis is more of my, my sort of alley. 
Um, it's, it's got to do with, I, I, I do statistics, I teach statistics, and it's about price movement. So I actually don't care what I've bought. As long as the price moves in a certain way historically, and you'll see in the disclaimer, history does not, uh, is not an indication of what the future will hold. But for me, life, everything about our view of the future is about history. We can't, we can't fathom anything in the future without taking what we've learned in the past and then uh, saying, well, that is kind of how these things work. So we assume that it's going to work like that in the future. So that's my, that's my view. Uh, again, as I say, disclaimer, that's my view. Okay. But so we use technical analysis. Technical analysis looks at price. Give me price and or volume. Um, and tell me, is the price going up and down, up and down? Uh, uh, you know, um, I want to buy it when it's down. I want to sell it when it's up. So if you want to think of the difference between the two, when you buy a house and you're buying it because you want to rent out the rooms, you'll probably do fundamental analysis. You'll go, well, how much can I sell a room for in the area? How much am I going to pay for the house? That one is that. And, then, uh, and that's, that's actually not a bad buy. Well, this is the price I'm willing to pay for the house. Um, whereas technical analysis is a little bit more like um, uh, my wife buying sugar at, at, the, at, the, at the shops. She knows by looking at something, she says, hang on a second, that's the cheap price for sugar. She doesn't go and say, uh, how, how much does it take to make sugar? And what is the benefit I'm going to get? And what is the value of that benefit? No, she goes, I'd like sugar. I'm going to use it anyway. And currently it's at a good price. So she will buy it. Uh, not going to sell it, obviously, but I mean, so it's a similar sort of thing. I don't care what the rand dollar should be. I don't take a view on that. But if the rand dollar is historically cheap at the moment, I might buy it. Or the robot at least might buy it. And so I use those sort of rules. I'll take you through a couple of those in a bit. So let me take you through where I would go to if I was starting with Forex. Uh, and this is uh, things that I've picked up over time, how I would start Forex. So the first thing is I would uh, I'd go to babypips.com. It is a brilliant website. It has uh, a, something called the School of Pipsology. And um, it's free. You can go in there uh, and you can learn from what they call kindergarten. They teach you what is Forex from basics to some rocket science stuff I haven't even got my head around yet. I will maybe at some point get there. But it is a brilliant course. I've seen many, uh, many other courses being offered 20, 30,000 Rand for the course. And really, it's, it's just a, a watered-down version of this course. You can do as much or as little as you want, and you can sort of test things out. Uh, so seriously, get there. The second thing I'll do is, um, is uh, get, start to listen to Bloomberg TV where you can. So I work, luckily for myself, I work from my home office. I think a lot of people do right now. Um, if you've got DSTV, you've apparently got Blue, uh, Bloomberg. I don't know. I don't have DSTV. Uh, but you can also get a half hour free on a browser um, on, on, an inter on the internet. So I've got three browsers. So when the one runs out, I go to the next one, go to the next one. But I, I, I listen to Bloomberg. What is nice is, I suppose, by uh, just hearing it in the background, that it sort of washes over. You start to pick up the lingo of, of trading, uh, what's happening in the world. You, it's quite interesting just to find out the different views. And what's oh. nice is I think it's a fairly... It's a fairly uh, non-biased platform. The people that they get to talk on there, some are really this way, some are really that way. What is apparent is no one actually knows where the future of the market is, although everyone likes to give a little bit of advice as to where they think it's going to go. Okay. Next, uh, you need uh, uh, to be able to practice a little bit. You can get yourself a demo account. Um, so I use some brokers in, in, in South Africa. Um, so I will talk about the software in a bit. It's MetaTrader 5. Uh, but I use um, GT247, um, they're in Joburg somewhere, and I use them as one of our brokers. We've got another broker called Quasi, they're down in Cape Town. Uh, we're going to be moving some of our funds across to there, and uh, because they, it's good to have more options um, when, when it comes to brokers. I've got a broker in the UK, if you want to move over there, uh, in either a dollar or a euro or a, um, or a pound-based account. You can go to Active Trades, a very good website, a very professional outfit. And then in the States, I'm using oanda.com um, and I've also uh, used a bit of forex.com. So all these, the ones that I've chosen right now are specific because of the software that I use. Um, as I said, it's MetaTrader 5. Uh, Crazy in Capital is MetaTrader 4, so I'm using both. 
and there are reasons for that. Uh, OANDA is MetaTrader 4 because the States has got a very interesting way that they allow you to trade with a sort of a first in first out um, uh, a way of trading. Technical, but uh, basically at the end of the day, I needed to use MetaTrader 4, so I rewrote it in MetaTrader 4. The difference with brokers is a little bit like looking at insurance products. Um, it's always difficult to read all the fine print and try to work out exactly what you got and what you're getting charged for. So I have found that um, my, my first broker was um, Active Trades and I got used to exactly what they charged me for. I mean, when it comes to trading, every single cent that, uh, that I can save on a trade is important to me. Um, and then I moved across to uh, another, another broker which had a different way of trading. GT247 has got a different way of, 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 um, of calculating things like interest overnight. And uh, when I moved to OANDA, again a different way. So it's not apples for apples necessarily, but I think the things that you're looking for is one, you can get hold of the people, their support team is available as much as possible. Um, so uh, Active Trades is 24-7, I can get hold of somebody on the website and there's somebody actually I can talk to, for instance. Um, when it comes to the ones in, in, in South Africa, uh, if you've got a rand based account and you want to keep your money here i understand that uh, but you can't get hold of the people all 24 7 uh, at the moment um and then uh, and then, then costs as i say so costs and the ability to move money in and out fairly easily that you don't have to send emails and say i'd like to withdraw money that you can push a button and the money comes back to you um, i like that sort of functionality also, we're running multiple uh, accounts, so uh, any one fund has got more than one account and each account, uh, and this is for uh, risk mitigation, each account only runs one currency pair, so this will be the pound dollar, that's the euro yen or whatever, uh, so if one account does take a knock, it doesn't take down the whole fund. But some brokers don't like the multiple funds. They, they, they see it as money laundering. <laughs> um, in actual fact, it's all the same fund. It all comes from one account. It all goes back to one account at the end of the day in terms of like an F&B account or whatever. So it, it can't be, but it's okay. I understand it's a, it's a very scary uh, environment, a legal environment to, to work in. So some, some, some uh, brokers do not uh, appreciate the, um, the multiple accounts. I need it. So I look for brokers that understand it and, and uh, allow us to move money in, move in between the accounts, move money out, uh, that works for us. I'd like to take you now through a screen capture of actually opening a demo account, uh, looking at what uh, MetaTrader 5 looks like and giving you some basic uh, uh, tools or uh, indicators that people use uh, when it comes to Forex trading, just to get your feet wet a bit, to get you started on this. Okay, so I want to show you through uh... Uh, some of the uh, places that you can go to get started on um, uh, trading. The first one I've, I've taken here, yeah, just a broker. This is GT247 up in Joburg that we use. Um, and if you want to, you can see an open free account. If you hit the open free account, it'll take you to the registration page. It'll ask you a whole lot of questions about yourself. It might ask you more than this. Um, so often they ask you about your income and your tax number and everything else. That's, in fact, the more questions they ask, the more legit you know they are. So, um, yeah, if you fill, fill all that in. Um, and then you get to, you can go to downloads. And, and it, so I'm showing you um, brokers that are specifically MetaTrader brokers uh, because the software that I use is MetaTrader. And I use a five, MetaTrader 5, which is GT247 uh, in, in South Africa, the only one I know of. And uh, GT uh, um, Quasi is the one in Cape Town, which is uh, a MetaTrader 4 platform. Both similar sort of software. I just use 5 by, by default because it was the first one I, I, I found. Um, on any of their websites, you can go and download MetaTrader 5. And if you do, you'll see it gives you a bit of a um, how to set it up. Uh, you can also go straight to MetaQuotes themselves. Meta, MetaQuotes is the name of the guys that actually wrote MetaTrader. And on their download page over here, you can say MetaTrader for Windows. Uh, and you can download this MetaTrader. Um, so uh, wherever you get it, um, even though sometimes they're branded from the um, broker you get it, you can still connect to any, any um, server available out there. So um, let me show you. MetaTrader 5, for instance. So this is MetaTrader 5 sitting over here. And if I wanted to open a new account, um, I've got a couple. I've used it for Active Trades overseas, and I've used it for GT247. But I could right hand click and say Open an account, and I could say MetaQuotes. Let's go straight to them. I say Next, 
and I say open a demo account up top here and I say next and uh, you put in whatever you want to put in here yes all my details um, demo server whatever you can put how much money you want in I would normally go 1 to 30 in terms of my gearing this one's got 1 to 33 I agree with the terms and conditions that I've never read that's great and I say next and bam it gives me a a login and a password uh, which we want to keep somewhere um, but basically we say finish and we should have a new account popping up there there's a new meta meta, meta quotes account sitting over here I'm now currently logged in as that and if I go to my trade screen at the bottom I see I got a million USD that's how easy it is to get a million USD okay this is not real money but you can then start trading uh, in the middle here, let me just change this to a, a nicer graph for people that have no idea what they're looking at. There's a line graph of the price of the, this is currently the pound Canadian dollar and on a one minute graph. So each of these things is the next minute, basically, and the price, how the price changed over whatever time period at the bottom here. I like to use things called candlesticks. Gives me a bit more information. These are still only one minute each. Uh, but where there is a white candlestick, uh, the price went down. I'm assuming that's the default. I normally. I just stopped that. Just give me a second. I'll stop that video for a second there. Okay, it looks like that video got very, um, very grainy at that point in time. I'm happy to take you through it, maybe live if you're interested. Um, I'll put you guys to sleep. <laughs> no, not at all. Um, John, thank you. Um, I think it's probably not necessary to take us through the details of, of MetaFire. Okay. All right. Well, I think it, uh, what is important is that you actually um, pointed people to where they can find it. And literally, it is a self-study. So, you know, I think it's not necessary that you spend time on that. Yeah. Um, I've got some weird questions for you because... Um, weird. <laughs> Yes, weird. Um, what is your experience of, of, of running a video and answering questions on the chat box? How did that work for you? Brilliant. I loved it. Um, I'm also lucky that I can type like the wind, so uh, yeah. it's, it might be difficult for people who can't. But, um, but the only thing I wonder is can the people on the others, obviously I've seen the video, so I did ignore that, but they listen to the video and typing at the same time. So I don't know if it works for them, but a lot of people spoke, which I think is more than I usually see, which is great. Yeah. Um, I think that's the important thing. I find I do the same as you. I actually set up a video and then answer the questions because, as you say, you know what's on the video. Um, just uh, for as a matter of interest, how long did it take you to prepare that video? That was actually fairly short. Uh, so the content itself, um, an hour, I got my son to help me. Unfortunately, it's the first time I'm using uh, Adobe Premiere. Um, so there's a hell of a lot to learn there. But if you want a brilliant free software called DaVinci, it is the guys are using it for um, for full length feature movies. It's brilliant. And it's free. It's a it's a good free version of it. Um, and if you look for a non techie, take a bit of time, I suppose. Um, uh, for myself, I learned it. I learned uh, to do it in probably about two hours. I'm guessing. Probably put the whole video together in two hours. And that's the first time we've used Premiere. And Premiere is not an easy thing to use. Oh, no, Adobe, Adobe generally is back to front. I actually don't like the software. <laughs> yeah, I know. Givenchy a good choice. And another choice is a thing called Loom. Okay, um, I would use Loom, yeah. It allows screen recording very easily. Um, anyway, that was the off-the-wall questions from my <laughs> side. Um, I, I, I did ask questions early in your chat about day trading. Uh, I yes. wonder if you could just re-emphasize how dangerous day trading could be because you're forced to close your trades at the end of every day, whether you want to or not. Oh, okay. Look, uh, so when I say day trading, I assume someone who trades within the day, um, within a day. I, I, never, I never have a forced close anywhere. Um, so I don't know of, um, of platforms which force you to close. Are you saying that there are out there? Because I haven't there used them. Are, there are platforms out there. There are, especially in the States. Okay. Um, you, can, you can actually join day trading platforms, but they force a closure every day. Okay. And so the problem with that would be, obviously, if you're sitting on the wrong side of the trade, you're forced out and you take the loss. Um, yeah. And, and I, I've got a very weird sort of look at, at, at that. I, I don't take losses. I, I, I would rather hold on. 
um, because in general, the difference between um, shares and Forex is that over time, shares should go up. If you think about any company, it should earn more money than it did the year before. That's just because inflation goes up and that's what we believe, or that's what should happen. Where in Forex, things go sideways over time. There's no reason for any one currency to, to be going up all the time. Obviously, if there's a war or something big happens, it will happen for a while. But generally, it goes sideways. So if you're in the wrong, if you if you buy something uh, and it goes uh, down uh, in in, in um, shares, it could go down until the company goes bang. But if you buy a currency and the and the and the country's currency goes down, it's not going to go down until the country disappears. Um, obviously, unless it's a third world war kind of thing. But generally, it'll it'll reach a platform where it says, well, now the country is so cheap that people will start buying their products and it'll obviously push the prices back up again. So I'm quite happy to to sit out and wait. As I say, I said in the chat, there was one trade of mine, which was almost a full year. I was on the wrong side of the trade for a full year and then it came back and I, and I closed that trade out about a week or two ago. Yeah. So, so day trading itself, I, I don't know the platforms, but... Um, no, they, they, they're platforms that advertise themselves a lot and they're very dangerous. Ron, maybe yeah. I, I was going to pick up. I'm going to pick up. On, sorry, Gavin. If I can yeah. just pick up on that point. When, I mean, you run a trade that length of time. I mean, you've got potential interest charges and things like that um, on, on, on the, the trades on some platforms. I know they there's a, there's a charge that accumulates on a on a trade that's open for an extended period. Okay, so so um, that's true. So there's something I, I, I typed it in there, I think, but it's something called the swap. Which, if you think about it, if you're buying rands with dollars, for instance, then you can think of it as you go to the bank and you you take a loan in rands at a certain interest rate, and then you put it into a dollar account and you get interest on that. And the difference between the two is called the swap, and they'll charge you overnight, or they'll give you the money overnight because it might be a positive as well. So over time, when I'm making as many trades as I am across as many currencies, they pretty much cancel each other out. But you can. That's why I would say when you look at the brokers, make sure you understand what they're going to charge you for. There should be no commission charge as you buy the thing. You're basically buying it at a spread. You're buying it a little bit more expensive than you could sell it for at that point in time. But you don't, at that point in time, pay somebody a commission. The money isn't gone. It's still You just bought something a little bit more expensive. And then make sure that whatever their calculations are for overnight trading, and sometimes you can only see that after trading for a bit, and you go, hang on a second, that, that looks a bit much. Um, you, you need to know what those are. So I, I haven't found a broker that's been dodged yet. I will be honest. I haven't found like a seriously one that charges you too much. I think they, there's too many players in the market for them to stay alive. Um, different if you're talking about things like Bitcoin and stuff, it's, it's more unregulated. So guys can start to push the boundaries there on what they charge you. But um, on Forex, it's extremely regulated around the world. So I think the guys who charge too much are out of the market automatically. I've got some other questions that was asked here by some people. I just want to uh, answer those questions if I can. Um, um, so firstly was the, can you use, um, can you use PayPal? Um, I just want to go into my account here. I've, I've, so when I yeah, so put let, my money in, yeah, sorry? Well, I actually asked that question, Grant. Uh, reason being is that I hold a, a PayPal account uh, outside of uh, the, the, the country um and my u.s partner puts money into my paypal account and uh, so therefore uh, you know i've got it uh, sitting in u.s dollars and so I, I take it what i would do there is use use a u.s based platform to move it straight from the paypal account into the um the broker the, the US broker yeah and yeah, I'm uh, just so looking... that, that was what i was thinking yeah, I'm just looking at Active Trades. It's the one that I've got most of my money with, and they have a deposit either by bank transfer, by uh, by card, which I normally do, uh, or by PayPal. Just remember the one thing: so from an anti laundry uh, money laundry or um, uh, and the whole terrorism protection thing, if you put it in in PayPal, they will pay it back to PayPal. You got you can't put it in in PayPal yeah. and hope to get it in another account. Okay. No, exactly, exactly. That's what I was. Uh, that's why I was asking. Um, you know, so yeah. Yeah. So, so they came then, uh, out, I'm sure other ones do as well. Yeah. And then uh, have you come across an organization called EMQ? Uh, they're also kind of in the, they're, they're in the Forex trading um, side. I haven't. Um, I haven't yet. I can look at it for you if you okay. want me to. Uh, what, what are they, yeah. is it just a broker or are they selling you a product of some sort? No, no, no. They, they've got, they've got a, 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 a uh, they're, they're basically a, 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 I think a, uh, uh, that type of thing. And, uh, oh, yeah, so I missed that. Been... 
I've been in touch with them for many years. Uh, e EMQ. Um, okay. Just those, uh, uh, you can look at it afterwards. Maybe we can have a chat afterwards. Something. Yeah, I can have a look at that for sure. Um, so Grant, if I can just pick pick up on one hmm. thing Chris said there, because and, and and tell me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is if you've got dollars, you don't have to trade with an American account. Uh, there are many brokers around the world who, world who will give you a dollar account, and you don't have to be forced into the the, the rules as you mentioned oh, earlier. Yeah, for sure, restricted by by American accounts. Yeah, so as, as Jasper just said, uh, Crazy in Cape Town has got a dollar account now. I know Active Trades has a dollar account. You just can't trade from inside the States, and they're actually very clever. So I've got a, the guy in the States. He's trying to trade from there, and they keep picking up his IP address, and they know he's in the States, and they, they just lock him out straight away. They won't even talk to him. So um, uh, so eventually, he, we had to change the whole platform to actually fit in with the, with the U.S. market. But you can trade anywhere with that. Um any other questions? I'm going to try and get my forex up so I can show you something. So there was, was a question. Uh, my yeah. Yeah. My yeah. account was with GT247, uh, and I was doing quite a lot of, uh, uh, you know, practice trading with GT247. Um, fortunately, so I got, got hooked into a, they actually closed me out on a couple of, because I, I, I have a similar uh, thought process to you. You know, if, if you're in a loss situation, hang on, hang on. And, uh, but GT247 actually closed me out of a couple of trades, which lost me a lot of money practice-wise. Uh, and, and so, and, yeah, so that's not the yeah. point. So when I trade and people ask me, you know, why are we giving you so much money if you're only using such a small amount? I'm, I'm using about 10% of the actual fund to, to trade. The rest of it is there to make it, um, it's to to make it that I'm able to uh, use the ten percent. If that makes sense, I'm using the rest as, as sort of my my collateral um, at the end of the day. Uh, and and if accounts go down far, they can. I've had accounts that actually close a loss, um, and it hurts. Uh, what I don't do is I don't go as far as a margin call. What margin call is when the when the broker closes you out themselves. You've gone so low that they're not going to take the risk anymore, so they just close your entire account out. And what happens there is if you say, let's say you're holding 10 uh, items, whatever it is you, you've bought, they will close all 10 out and you'll take the loss on everything. It's a, it's a big knock. Um, so what we've, what I've got inside the robot is that as soon as you're halfway towards being closed out uh, through that, it'll start by itself, start closing one, one position at a time. But we, we're talking micro lots. So I sell 0 0.01 at a time. But it does it, and it just keeps me above a certain level of cash all the time. And that's the aim there. Um, I just want to see if I can get into this. Grant, I think Zaningi had, had, a, had a question. I saw we did on Mike. Uh, Zaningi, were you wanting to ask uh, Grant something? Yes, thank you. I, um, I had a question there on the chat, chat box. Um, I think in pursuit of trying to, to trade, um, you know, I, I, I was saying to Grant, I've lost some money. Uh, I wrote there on the chat for that I wrote, I, I've lost some money, but I, I know that there's an opportunity um, for one to make more money um, with trading. But I came across some uh, few websites and, and they're mainly based in, um, in London and in US where they say uh, you can put money there and then they trade for you for a couple of months and then they give you an interest. So I'm, I'm, I'm questioning and I'm trying to check if that is legit. Is it something that uh, you have uh, seen in your, in your, in your um, industry and it's something that, is, um, that we can you know, use as individuals if just to diversify and to make sure that we put our eggs in different baskets. And obviously it is, it, it, it's an online platform. You give them the money and then they trade for you and they give you the interest. I'm not sure if you have heard of something like that or it is just, you know, people coming again with schemes. Look, I don't know. I mean, there, there are so many out there. My feeling is if you're not going to trade for yourself, then rather go for some of the big names that we already know in South Africa, go for the Alan Grays, go for, um, you know, uh, Liberty or whoever, whoever you can, I don't know, whoever you can, can, who you know, or even the banks themselves or just straight interest at the bank at 6% um, in, a, in a savings account. Um, there are many, many people out there. If you don't know them, it's difficult, especially if you move your money overseas. Now you're sitting across um, 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 legal jurisdictions. So if they run away with your money, 
the, the South African legal framework that we have here cannot go across border and go and get that money back for you. Whereas if you do it in somebody who's in South Africa, um, then um, bar maybe Bitcoin, which is a difficult one, it's not quite regulated yet. So, um, but if you're doing shares or you're doing Forex in South Africa, then there is a, um, there's a um, FCA, FSCA, I think they call themselves, it used to be Financial Securities Board, I can't quite remember what the name is now, but then at least you've got somebody you can go to. Um, so, so where I am is I don't need, um, okay, that's unfair, I suppose, I can trade, so I can do it for myself, but my, my passion is to get people to understand that they can trade for themselves, and the honest, honest, honest truth, and don't get, don't get confused by AI, people, artificial intelligence, people, oh, well, that's the new great thing, and if you've got an AI, it must be good. Because it's a computer learning by itself. No, it's not. It's 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 really a mine is AI in in the technical um, version or definition of AI. My thing's AI, but it's really just rules. I told it, so I could be wrong. Um, I just happen to have a lot of history, which is now proving that okay. So it actually seems to be working. And I say seems because who knows what happens in the future. But the way I've spread my risk is unlikely to have a big knock on anything. Uh, 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 now nah, I've, I've got so many accounts. I've got fifty two robots running at a time, so. Um, you know, I think try and learn for yourself how to do this. Go push the buttons for yourself. If you're not, if if it's really not your thing, and it might not be because it's time. You got to you got to love it. And if it's not your thing, then you're putting yourself at risk by assuming that somebody else is going to care about your money as much as you are. So then yeah. I'd rather just put it in a big institution that we know is is the the returns are not going to be double your money in a year, but at least you know the returns and you've got a legal framework to help you out if something goes wrong. That's exactly what I've been doing because I've been trading for myself for a couple of years. I've made gains, I must say, and I've made losses. But, you know, when you sit and you balance the two, you find that maybe your losses are more than your gains. Um, and, and, I th and I think the other thing is that we enter into it with the illusion that we are going to make lots of money. Yeah. Um, and and which, 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 in a way, I think it is a terrible way to condition your mind. I think we must enter into it knowing exactly that there will be gains, yes, but there will also be losses. The most important thing is to balance the two. But talking about that, again, do you offer, um, I think someone was writing here on the chat post to say, do you offer uh, a training service to those who are interested? I don't. I have given some training before, and it's a possibility. I can I can chat to Jasper as well. I know he is passionate about these things, so um, maybe we can put something together. I don't know if there's enough people who are interested, but I, um, yeah. I, and so I'm I'm a weird kind of trainer. I really want to I want to train you to teach yourself. That's my aim always. So I I still teach at Varsity, uh, and I do a lot of tutoring, and I. They people want to book me for 10 weeks in a row. And I said, no, I need two weeks. After two weeks, if you can't go away and teach yourself from there, then I haven't achieved what I want to do. So it's not a, for me, it's not a big money-making scheme. It's just, I, I, yeah, I can, I can right now, a bit busy, but I will chat to Jasper. I don't know if Jasper's still online, but if, if possible, uh, we can, we can talk about that. Um, cool, Jasper. Um, also, uh, yes. uh, when it comes to, sorry, when it comes to unrealistic expectations, um, uh, um, sorry, no, sorry, Chris, ask a question. I'll come back now in a second. Yeah, basically, basically, I would, I would be, uh, I would be interested to, uh, to, to, to go on a course if you were, if you were going to run a course. So that, that would be, uh, that would be great. The question that I actually have is, is for uh, somebody who is uh, getting into it uh, for the first time, would you suggest some kind of a, a robot that uh, that does an automatic trade for you, or would you say stick no. away from that? No, I, my feeling is that you should learn this by yourself. Uh, you should you should start to get your own rules. Start to. Uh, the, my first step would be understand what these these. I was going to show you some moving average crossovers and. A relative strength index. These are all like things that come with the package. You download them, you push F1, it pops up a thing, it tells you how they work and how you should read them. So first go and learn what everyone's given you. And it's not difficult, difficult stuff. Look at it once a day for, for half an hour at the end of the day, become a day trader, for instance, not that you get close every day, but that you, that you, um, that you look at it once a day and you make your calls. Um, if you, if you, then start getting some rules. So the rule might be if the crossover happens there and the RSI is at five and at the moment the exchange rate is there and the interest rate is there, then I will buy this thing. Just make yourself really hard. It mustn't be, 
I looked at the tea, the, the, the tea leaves this morning, and I think it's going to go up. You know, it's it's not it's not about your emotions or your feelings. It's about some hard and fast rules. And then once you've got that, then you can start thinking about automation. In MetaTrader 5, you can go to a market where you can buy robots. But, and this is the thing I wanted to say uh, um, earlier was uh, the a question I often get is, if your robot is so good, then why are you selling it? And mm. it's a great question because it's a question I ask. It's the first thing that I ask other people. Why? Why? And, 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 and the, those Ponzi schemes that are coming to your mailbox at the moment, and they're offering those, whole, those big amounts, why on earth are they getting hold of you? Have you got billions of rands that they need? No, probably not. They just want a, a grant from you. And a thousand, so really, so my answer to that is I'm not selling the, the package. I don't sell the package. I own the package. No one gets hold of my package. Some, uh, I, I use it inside funds. Um, I don't have enough of my own money. That's the truth. So a, a good telltale sign of a, of a, of a, of a, uh, a shock is that he starts his video of, uh, or he or she will, will start a video of saying, you know, this is my house. These are my 50 cars. And straight away I go, well, then why are you talking to me? Why do you need my thousand rand? Because you obviously don't need me. Okay. So that's a, just a telltale sign from my point of view. So um, I can show you my house. Well, that'll take all the five seconds. And then, um, and my car that hasn't started because the battery is dead since the lockdown. But um, uh, uh, so I don't sell. And if I had enough money of my own, I might well be sitting in the Bahamas and not talking to you guys. I'll be quite honest. <laughs> okay. So, uh, you know, I, 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 the guys that have come along with me, I've looked after them well, and I will look after them into the future. But there might come a time where I don't need to expand this. I'm not looking to become a billionaire. Um, so, you know, I'm not looking necessarily to expand it. But it's, yeah. Uh, so why do guys want to sell it is, is my first question. If, and, and, and on my one, you don't have to pay up front. Uh, when, on any of these funds, I don't charge an upfront fee. I don't charge if you lose money. In fact, if you lose money, I remember how much you lost and I first make that money back before I make any more money. So and you don't see that. Brokers will charge you if you buy and they'll charge if you sell, whether you made money or not. So on sign off day, brokers made a lot of money. <laughs> People didn't. <laughs> brokers made a lot of money. So, you know, uh, uh, it, that's, that's where I am. But uh, yeah. Anyway, any other questions there? Oh, I can show you the screen if you want to. Yeah. Grant, uh, thank you. Those are very grown-up answers. Thank you so much because they, unfortunately, your industry in inverted commas is filled with a lot of charlatans, and yeah. um, I think people need to be very, very careful. You know, um, stock trading as well. Don't listen for tips. Go and get the knowledge. Stop mucking about trying to find a shortcut to get rich. It doesn't happen. It, there isn't one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? I see D D has her hand up. Yeah, D. All yours. Hi. Um, thank you so much. The presentation was brilliant. I'm uh, a trader actually, so I wanted to. You have responded to my question to say how accurate is your system uh, in terms of um, where, when you are utilizing it. I wanted to understand your 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 system. Um, do you offer um, other people that are trading by themselves that they can utilize it? I know. I, I, I'm not know. going there anymore. Yeah. So, yeah, he has a couple of, of this is the one fund that I'm running. It's been running for about a year. I can choose anyone. Let's just choose something in the middle. Uh, so, 7% return. And then it'll give you a feel of how much we've paid. And if you're looking for accuracy, there's your accuracy. I'm, it's 100%, but you've got to take it with a pinch of salt. Um, if you've got time, I'll tell you more about what that means. But that is a typical um, answer that you will get from traders because they would like you to think the best of their, their trading platform. Um, it is good. but you, but you And this is a, the worst thing, is that you can have brilliant returns on paper when you're actually almost dead, but you can't see it. And, and then one day the company closes and there's nothing left. Um, in terms of how my thing works, um, I could tell you just if you know anything about uh, trading, I use something called Bollinger Bands mostly, and um, I use something called a mean reversion strategy. So I don't trend follow, which means that if the price starts to go up, I don't follow it. I don't assume it's going to keep going up. I assume that if it goes up quickly, it's probably going to come down to somewhere in the middle. And so that's called a mean reversion strategy. So I'll work on that. The answer is both strategies work. I'm not saying mine. The, 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 the trend doesn't work. Um, I've just decided my one is, is, is this way around and I've written my, my whole code, there's 600 lines of code that works all the way around that. And I'm happy okay, to, Grant, to delve Grant, into I that. Think, Grant, I think I'm going to have to jump in there. No, it's cool. Obviously, 
obviously you're passionate about this and we can let you keep talking for hours and hours and hours, but we've got about five minutes before the next speaker. <laughs>